Look at me back for week number two. It's your girl Adoria Asia, and I'm back with another video. Video. Back with another video. Video. It's your girl Adoria Asia, and I'm back with another video for you all. And today, you're gonna watch me do my little moisturizing routine and put my hair to braids as I tell you my birth story. Since I just plopped on you guys last week that, you know, I was pregnant, but that was a long time ago. Let, let's just, let's just get into it. I, so boom, you're here to hear about my birth story, right? We're gonna get into that as well as getting into a whole lot of moisturization in the hair because why not? There's never too much moisture, right? <laughs> so let me start by saying that my hair has been like this for about a week now. <laughs> Cause you know, wait, let me see. So first I'm gonna start Start by taking this down and then we're going to pre-poo with some conditioner. This is Everyday Shea by Alafia. I think that's how you say it. But yeah, Everyday Shea by Alafia. And it's not my favorite conditioner, but you know, I use it for stuff like this. So I'm gonna go through and detangle and pre-poo while I commence my story and i'm also going to be using this new brush that i bought yesterday it is a detangling brush by diane it's a flexible vent brush for everyday detangling but it's cool because i always like to detangle with this with a paddle brush in the shower but it always gets ripped apart and the, the water be sitting in it and i don't like all that mold and mildew and nobody wants to do all that so this is nice because it can dry straight through. So I'm gonna go ahead, brush through with the conditioner, detangle, twist it back up a little, sit for a second, wash my hair, you know, the whole process. Beginning with my story now, right? Well, I guess I have to start all the way from the beginning because y'all know nothing. I dropped a little bomb in my last video that I was pregnant when I recorded that. <laughs> I think like seven months pregnant. Due date was August 16th. My beautiful son was born on August 13th. And let me tell you a little bit about the story. First off, do you see the growth? Wow, but do you see it though? You don't because I'm wearing black. I'll be right back. I'll wear my mama shirt. It's fitting for the video, isn't it? Mama established 2021, okay. Let's get into it. Get into it. I've been growing my hair since while I've been away. I don't know what y'all been doing, but uh, huh. I'll start by saying that my pregnancy was very normal, ordinary, uneventful. You know, it was real chill. Nothing crazy happened. Pregnancy was very uneventful in a good way. Like you couldn't really tell I was pregnant unless I was standing in front of you. Almost throughout my whole entire pregnancy, I just looked like I ate too much Chipotle or something because it could have been a food baby and nobody would have known. <laughs> Once August hit, it was definitely countdown time and you could have the baby any day, right? And you're, I was always so anxious because you know, I've never been pregnant before. I've never been into labor before. So I was anxious because I didn't know how the labor was going to go. If it was going to be long, short, hard, easy. You know, so many questions, yet no answers. It's funny how it happened. It was just so random and so chill. It was chill until it wasn't, right? So one random day, I planned on working until I had the baby. So... My last day at work was August 11th. I get home August 11th, you know, we do our nightly routine, blah, blah, blah. And it is around 12.45. So it was around 12.45 or so. I get up to go use the bathroom. 
you know, nothing crazy, just using the bathroom. I finish using the bathroom, I get up to go wash my hands, and when I get up, put my pants up and everything, I feel a little, a little trickle. I'm just like, huh, who did that? Because it wasn't me. <laughs> okay, I was like, hmm, did I like not get all of, all of it out when I sat down just now? So I was like, let me try to pee again and see what happens. So I sat down and it was another little trickle, but I didn't know if I did it voluntarily or not. And I couldn't tell, you know, which hole it came out of. So with that being said, after I trickled and didn't know where it came from, I was like, let me get some pads just in case, right? So I put on a pad and then, well, I'm shuffling looking for it because I haven't worn a pad in so damn long. So I'm looking for it. And then Bay goes, is everything okay? And I'm like, oh, yes. I, I, and I said, I'm not sh completely sure, but I'm pretty sure my water just broke. And then there was silence like, he said, okay, well, you need to come to bed now because you need to get your rest, which was very true. But I was now excited because I'm like, oh my God, did my water just break? What the heck? So <laughs> I called the doctor on call because by the time it's 1 a.m., I was not having any contractions at that time. But after I got off the phone with the doctor, maybe about 10 minutes have gone by and my body has started contracting. So I started getting pretty regular contractions, I thought they were, and but it was not unbearable pain. Like I could talk through them, you know. It wasn't it wasn't crazy. We ain't get we ain't, it didn't get crazy yet, right? After I started having contractions, I called the doctor back and let her know that I was having contractions. So she was like, "All right, so since your water broke, we would definitely like to have the baby within 24 hours to reduce the risk of any." Um, infection because that protects the baby right so she was like give it about six hours and in about six hours you can head to the hospital if nothing crazy happens before then so I was like all right cool that puts me about at about 7 30 a.m. so I'm like all right let me go get some sleep blah 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 whatever whatever so I eventually end up falling asleep. Contractions were picking up a little bit, but not too much, nothing I couldn't handle, nothing too crazy. So I wasn't worried. So I, I fell asleep and then I woke up, <laughs> like my body knew, okay, it's seven o'clock chick, time to get up. So I got up, my body, I was not contracting at all. So I was like, okay, maybe we have some more time, whatever but they said they wanted to have the baby within 24 hours since my water broke. So that's always something that I'm thinking about, right? So I'm like, all right, so we're gonna get ready to go to the hospital. My, my hospital bag was like halfway packed. I just need to add like a few more things to it. And I was like, okay, let me go eat some breakfast cause I ain't trying to be hungry or whatever. So I go downstairs, Bay is still sleeping. I let him sleep. I'm like, I'm about to go have some breakfast. I go and make me a little cream cheese bagel with some turkey sausage, don't judge. That was my last breakfast I had before becoming a mother. <laughs> it's so crazy because everything is like so monumental. It's like, this is my last time doing this without having a kid, it's wild, right? So, I go downstairs, make my breakfast, you know, I finish packing for both me and Bay for the hospital. You know, I'm just taking my time. At this point, I'm not contracting, so I'm like, okay, I have time. Well, I called the doctor that morning and she was like, okay, well, whenever you're ready, um, you can come in and then we'll be ready for you, essentially. You'll have a room waiting for you. You'll be good to check in. So I, we get to the hospital, we got to the hospital around, 11 30 11 45 we check in they bring us right to the room we didn't have to wait you know get undressed do your thing whatever whatever we get we getting ready to have a baby okay we're getting ready to have a baby i'm still not contracting crazily normally frequently i should say my timeline for this hospital visit is pretty messed up because 
at a certain point i had so much damn drugs in me that i didn't know what was what or when was what okay so bear with me they give me this drug called cytotech which basically induces labor break the pill in half you put it in the side of your mouth and then you basically let it dissolve there after my first round of cytotech If I wasn't having contractions before, I was definitely having contractions now. And when I tell you the, the pain, the pain, the pain, I don't know what time they gave me this cytotech. I think it was later into the afternoon because um, they gave my body a while. They gave me a little while to try to, to try to let my body do it on its own. But after they gave me that side of deck, oh buddy, it was on and popping, okay? I was trying to stay away from the epidural, mainly because I was afraid of it, because it's a needle going into your spine. And I was like, oh, I'm not trying to be paralyzed. I'm trying to be able to walk out of here. So that's the main reason why I was afraid of the epidural. <laughs> but I, I am, was not against it at all. Okay, after they gave me the first dose of Cytotec, pain was getting crazy. The contractions were going crazy. So I was like, I need something, right? I was trying to hold off on the, on the epidural, but I was like, I need something. So they offered me a pain medication that they put in my IV. I already had the IV in my hand. So I was like, okay, whatever, let's try that. <laughs> when i tell you i was basically high okay i'm not gonna sugarcoat it i'm not gonna put it any type of way but any other way i was high and i could still feel the contractions but that pain medication in particular just took the edge off right like i could still move i could feel i could feel it but it ain't hurt that bad you know so it made the pain bearable but i was also incoherent which was uh, a con for me because I basically just lost time. If I'm blessed to do this again, I would skip that part only because I would like to be alert, coherent, awake, and you know, know what's going on, right? Then they gave me the second dose of Cytotech. <laughs> Buddy, after that second dose of Cytotech, that pain medication they gave me in my IV was doing absolutely nothing zero zip zilch it was doing nothing for me and then by that time i was only three and a half four centimeters dilated and i was like i still got six centimeters to go i was like mm -mm. give me that epidural right now right now right now right now they gave me the epidural and it actually wasn't that bad because what I didn't know is that they numb the area before they stick the needle inside. So the part that only hurt the most was when they were numbing me. And it was like a kind of like a burning sensation when the anesthetic goes inside of you. But um, they numbed the area first. And I'm hunched over like this. I'm holding on to a pillow. They numb the area and then they go ahead and they're like, you need to stay very still. If you feel, and mind you, contractions are still happening. And like I said, the pain medication before was wearing off or was not working. So I was in pain every time a contraction came, but I still had to remain still. Imagine, I felt when the needle went in my back, not painfully, and then you feel it's like moving around. So it's basically a catheter that they put because they administer the epidural um, whenever you need it. It's not just like a, a shot and done, right? Which is also something I didn't know. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of unknowns going into this, right? They don't really teach you or explain to you how all this happens, but uh, yeah. After the epidural was done, it's basically a catheter in your back. They tape it down, tape it in place to make sure it doesn't move and then you're good. So I was good and I couldn't feel from the waist down. I was numb, right? I didn't feel no pain, we were straight, we was good. We were happy until 
Now, this is where stuff starts to hit the fan, right? Until, homie, <laughs> the baby's heart rate started fluctuating, right? I'm like, okay. So they tried to move me around, put me in different positions to see if that will level, level things out. Mind you, my legs are numb, right? They wanna they wanted me to get on all fours. I'm just looking at them like how? <laughs> how 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 exactly do you want me to do that? I can't feel my legs. But I managed to do it. We got there. Stuff is happening very quickly at this point. So they're like, you know, the heart rate is still fluctuating. This is not working. The normal heart rate of the baby at that time was about 130 and it went all the way down to like 80 and then you know obviously that's not good the baby's in distress so i hear them talking about c-section and i'm just like excuse me what what remember i told you i had a very positively uneventful pregnancy so c-section was me oh baby you're awake Alright, we're back. I have the baby with me. So, we're back. Well, I'm back. Well, we're back. See, that's another thing with having a baby. It's no longer I. It's always we now. We are doing something. I went in the shower, I washed it out. And now, we're going to... And now we're gonna put this Shea Moisture Hydrate and Repair Protein Treatment, okay, in our hair. So C-section was the last thing on my radar, okay? I was not looking for C-sections and C-section was not looking for me, okay? We were not looking for each other. However, we ended up meeting on that day. While that was happening, Bay was taking a little nap. I looked over to the left and he was sleeping, right? So I was like, uh-uh, you gotta get up right now, right now. By this time, we've been in the hospital for at least 12 hours. So it was roughly around maybe 11.45, 11.50 at night when all of this is happening, right? Well, it gradually happened up until this point, but when she starts hitting the fan and they start talking about C-sections around this time. So they're like, okay, we're gonna get the, you know, all, we're gonna get the room ready just in case we have to do it and blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And whole time, one of the nurses is like, you're gonna be okay. Cause my, like I said, I'm crying. You're gonna be okay, blah, blah, blah. So I look over, I'm like, babe, you need to wake up. He wakes up and he wakes up to like five people in the room around me, me with an oxygen mask on. Mind you, I've never had an oxygen mask on in my life. That was interesting. And he's like, what in the world happened? Like what's going on right now? So I can only imagine it was probably pretty scary for him to see as well. But um, so that happened, right? He's awake now and now they're basically prepping me for surgery. So, <laughs> So they go from saying, yeah, we might have to do a C-section to, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. They wanted to do it then before it was too late. Wanted to make sure mom and baby were happy and healthy. And that's always the goal, right? No matter what uh, we plan, the goal is always for health, happy and healthy mom and baby, right? Okay. They roll me into the OR. All this is happening real quick. Now they start pumping me with the anesthesia, so I'm completely numb because they're about to cut me open, right? Mind you, before major surgery, I don't know if any of y'all had had surgery before, just in general, but when you get anesthesia, you're not supposed to eat, right? At least eight hours before your procedure. Well, like I said, C-section wasn't on homegirl's radar. So, around 5.30, Bay and I had a whole Chick-fil-A dinner, okay? I looked at one of the nurses that was in there and I said, I feel like I'm about to throw up. When I tell you she brought 
a pan, like a like a, a, a little bed pan, dish pan. Well, I don't know what the heck it was, but she brought it to me, and I used it. I filled it all the way up, okay, and it was nasty. But yeah, I felt so much better after it happened, and that was that, right? I'm gonna do a little heat situation, right? So we're gonna use the plastic bag because we don't what? We recycle out here, okay? We don't waste stuff. I'm gonna put it with the red in the front because it seems kind of festive, I don't know. It's Christmas time. We're gonna put the shower cap on it, okay? We packing in the heat, cause I pack heat like I'm the oven door. Oh, okay, bars. All right, and then just like so I have my mask washed out. We're gonna put this apple cider vinegar and castor oil leave-in conditioner, conditioner by Shea Moisture in the hair. I'm gonna do two braids as a protective style. Nothing crazy. All right, so back to my story. Bay is still not in the room yet. Where's Bay? He's not here. They're like, he's coming, he's coming. He's getting dressed right now. I said, okay. So he comes in the room. When you're having a C-section, they put the curtain up in front of you so you don't see anything. Um, and then the dad sits by. He was sitting right here by my head. And I looked at him and I said, if I say I feel like I'm about to throw up, you need to bring that pan to my face as fast as you can. Before long, the nurses were asking me, can you still feel that? And they're like poking me, like where they're about to cut. I'm like, yes, I can still feel it. And I'm scared because I'm like, oh my God, I can still feel it. And I'm going to be in pain. And before I knew it, they were, they were already had me cut open. And I was being tugged every which way. It was pretty weird laying on the table when you're just like this. <laughs> and then I felt when they took him out of me, I could feel the difference. And by that time, we didn't know what the gender was. It was a surprise. They looked at dad and they said, you guys don't know what the gender is, right? And we were like, no. They said, dad, tell her what it is. He gets up, looks over the curtain and goes, it's a boy <laughs> and I said I knew it <laughs> because I've been calling him a boy since January and he was born in August I just knew I knew it all right so we got one side down or whatever and then we gotta do the other side but back to my story even though that was kind of like the end of the story and just like that we finished so that was my birth story, labor and delivery, all the way up until my little precious bundle of joy was born. And then this is my protective style that I did that I'll probably have in my hair for a few days because all I've really been doing is just going to the gym, staying at home. So I needed to have something that is low maintenance, but still looks decent, you know? Thanks for watching my video. You can leave a like. Subscribe, watch the next video, you know, do your thing, do your thing. Leave a comment, let me know what you want me to talk about, what hairstyle you want to see, you know, all those things. Thank you. Bye!